I want to welcome everyone today to this live Q&A. It's a time for you to come and ask your questions concerning the book of Revelation. Now, I'm not going to guarantee I can answer every question because it is a book of prophecy. And much of what is said, we may not know exactly how or when it occurs until it happens. That is the biggest mistake we make when we look at prophecy. All of Israel was expecting the arrival of Jesus, but because they had it pictured in their mind and were determined to have it happen one particular way, most of Israel missed him. So as we discuss the book of Revelation, yes, the Lord has revealed a lot of it um, and how it connects together to me, but it doesn't mean that it'll be that there are some things that I do not know or know exactly how they're going to come to pass. So we're just going to talk about it today. So I just want to welcome everyone into this room and this uh, revelation Q&A here today. The other thing we must remember is that that we can agree to disagree. The book of Revelation isn't by any means critical to your walk as a Christian. You do not, we do not have to agree on everything within that book for you to have a relationship with the Lord and for us to be able to work together. So we can agree to disagree on this book. The final thing I want to mention as we begin this meeting is that some of the things we're going to talk about can be kind of frightening. You know, it can stir up fear if you don't have your focus on the right place. You have to be focused on the Lord, and he will provide for you during this time, during the time that is quickly approaching. And, but we have to nurture our relationship with him, strengthen our relationship with him. That is the major preparation that must be done for what is coming. And it's all about him. Um, if you have questions, you can send them to me at, um, my lynnhardy.com website, look for the contact form and, and submit your questions for the book of revelations there for the next, for the upcoming meeting. They're held once a month. Um, this will allow me to research and get the scriptures ready for you. Otherwise in the meeting, I might be able to tell you this, that, and the other thing, but I might not be able to reference the exact scripture and place why, why, why it's that way. So just a little note here today. Do we have any other questions concerning the book of Revelation or Daniel's week? Now is the time for your questions to be answered. Um, somebody asked, why was there five years before the Feast of Tabernacles? So let me go back to that slide and show it to you. Why are these five years here? We know that the coming that the Lord fulfilled the, the spring feast during his first coming. Remember, he was crucified on Passover. He rose on first fruits. The Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost, um, the Feast of Weeks. So all of those were actually fulfilled by his first coming. The second coming of Jesus will fulfill the fall feasts. We have the Feast of Atonement, this Feast of Tabernacles, and actually there's also trumpets. So when we look at this, um, these feasts must be fulfilled and there's 19 years left. Um, so Daniel's week will begin during the Feast of Trumpets. Trumpets la it includes the Feast of Tr Atonement. They're all included in a 10 year period. But the, Daniel's week will begin somewhere within the Feast of Trumpets. And at the end of it, the Feast of Atonement will occur. That is when um, the rapture will happen is at the Feast of Atonement. There are five years or five days, five days in between the Feast of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles. Now that we know that in Daniel's timeline, that, that days actually equal years. Remember the seven year agreement is a week long agreement. So our days equal years. So we have five days in between the Feast of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is five years. So I believe that this five years is where the bowls of wrath will be poured out. The Feast of Atonement, um, during that feast, there is a final trumpet blown, a final trumpet of the year. And that trumpet is blown, and it says that all... Um, 
consequences for sin are sealed at that time. What you receive for the next year is determined um, by the Feast of Atonement. There's a final trumpet that's blown at that time. And remember, we have seven trumpets that are blown in uh, in the book of Revelation. We have five, uh, seven seals and seven trumpets. And at the final trumpet will be the rapture. And I believe that's the Feast of Atonement. And then we have, um, five, there'll be a five-year period. Then the Feast of Tabernacles begins. Okay, we have another question. Does the timeline show approximately when the temple will be built? That is the million dollar question, D. I'm so glad you asked that. Um, when will the, the temple be built? That is what we don't know. Remember, God said, we will not know the day or the hour of our Lord's return. And so when the temple is built begins Daniel's week um, and that we can start counting time toward to the end of, of time, to, to the end of this age, um, once that begins. So no, no one knows the day or the hour when that temple will be built, but we're all commanded to know that the time is close. So do you, are, are you aware that Israel actually has all the elements ready for a temple? They've actually got all the building uh, materials set aside and ready so that they can get that temple built just like that. It's not going to take 49 years like it did in the time of our Messiah, because, you know, this is the age of technology. They've gathered all the materials. They are ready to go, ready to build that temple at any time. But it's where they should build it is a spot that is um, claimed by by many by three different countries, I think, at least Syria and Israel. I think Jordan might be one of them as well. And so because that area is claimed, um, Israel cannot build their temple. They're waiting for a peace treaty. So we as Christians should be looking for a temple to be built. There's going to be a covenant and, and there's going to be somebody who comes becomes really popular with small people. And that will be the Antichrist. That will be the one who's against God. He's going to be the one that sets up the abomination that makes desolate in the temple. But when that will happen, we don't know. We just as Christians are keeping our eyes open, looking for that temple to get started. When it does, I'll make sure and mention it here at these meetings. I might even hold a special meeting saying, yes, it has started. Woohoo! Um, do we have any additional questions concerning the book of Revelation? It says, is the abomination of desolation already somewhere in the world? It is not yet in the world. Remember, it takes three and a half years for the abomination to be fully set up in the temple. First, the Antichrist gets really mad when he is thwarted and he's no longer backed by the United States. That happens. <laughs> it says that the ships of the Mediterranean no longer um, no longer support him, so he, he doesn't win a victory that he goes out to accomplish. And, because, and when he comes back to Israel, he's all mad at, at uh, Israel and God, and he takes it out on the people of the covenant of God. Anyone who won't come to his side and he and he stops those sacrifices and offerings but it takes him three and a half years to set up the abomination of desolation the abomination of desolation remember uh we he, we read about it in the book of revelation and it says that the antichrist brings a beast to life it is a um a non-living thing that he brings life too. We also see a lot of other things in the book of Revelation. Do, do you guys want to know about the abomination of desolation next? Is that where we're going? If you are, I could bring up some scriptures. So in the book of Revelation, not until, not until the, it says that the Antichrist brings a beast to life and make everyone worship the beast and that it makes everyone take a mark in their in their hand or in their forehead. And when you, that, that thing that's implanted in your hand um, gives, you the, gives you the ability to buy and sell. And then it says this, we see this scripture. I'm trying to find it for you. Um, here it is, Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast, remember the Antichrist being, brings the beast to life 
was taken, and with him the false prophet that worked miracles, which deceived them that had the mark of the beast, and worshipped his image. And both and these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Okay, so, oh, so that's at the end. Wait a minute. So we're not quite there. That's not the place I wanted to go. Um, I'm just going to have to give it to you today. And if you want the scriptures, I can address that tomorrow. In the book of Revelation, it says, out of the mouth of the beast and the Antichrist and the false prophet comes frogs. And these frogs go and and um, destroy and and talk all the kings into coming into war and, and bring a great battle at the end of time. Well, frogs are demon spirits. So and we also see that um, in another part in Revelation, it says that um, that these spirits were cast into the lake of fire that were in the beast and the Antichrist and the false prophet. So there are these spirits that inhabit the, the final um, reproduction. So the Antichrist will be inhabited by Satan. The false prophet will also be inhabited probably by a Jezebel spirit. We know that, that that's what they love to do. And then it says that out of the abyss, when the one of the bowls of wrath are poured out, out of the abyss, um, the bottomless pit comes this king, this king demon that was chained in the abyss and it's let loose and an angel's sent to let it loose. And it comes out with all the smoke. And it, that is the eruption of a volcano um, in the ocean. And with that will come, be released from the pit of the earth, this demon, and it will go and inhabit the beast. Now, what is the beast? Well, the beast is something that is brought to life. I believe it is a sentient AI. I believe that there is, you know, AI isn't necessarily bad. It's a, a computer program that learns and and um, that just takes what is being done and calculates what is needed. Not such a bad thing, but sentient is a different matter. When something is alive and it's got a mind of its own, that is something entirely different. So I believe that there's going to be a that while well, we know right now that there's a certain person who will not be named, who has started a tech company um, nonprofit in Israel, and they have been given billions of dollars to run this tech company. And now, now Israel has come out with this new AI to um, take care of their defenses, their military stuff, right? Um, so because an AI, a computer can run a whole lot faster than a human brain. So Israel is starting to integrate this AI into their military defenses. Um, in the, where it talks about the Antichrist, it says, I think that's in Daniel 11, it talks about, him worshiping the God of fortress, the God of strength, the God, you know, of war, but it's a God like no one has ever seen up until this time. It's something completely different. And he gives it money and gold and jewels and precious stones. Well, that is what it takes to create an AI that is powerful enough to, to take care of the defenses you have to you know there's there's precious metals that have to be to to make the computer um so i believe that this ai that's being created will eventually become sentient it will also bring peace to the world um after a whole after the seals and trumpets are are blown because we have an asteroid that hits the earth. We have some um, ring of fire going off. The world is going to be in a state of turmoil. There's going to be pestilence running around. That means like COVID on steroids, whole bunch of stuff going on. And so the Antichrist is going to parlay this with the AI system that has shown that to be so helpful and protective to start running, running mankind. And at one point at the end of the tribulation, the end of that seven year period that were, that Daniel's week, it says that they're not able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Okay. 
What does that sound like? Not able to sell without the, the mark of the beast. Already America is testing out um, a new uh, paperless money system that's all wireless. So it's, it's all in the internet. So when, when you don't no longer have paper money and it's all um, computerized, if you have an AI running everything, well, they may want to put a chip in your head or your forehead in order to make it run, in order to make it, in order to make you to interface with it to be able to buy and sell. So that will be the mark of the beast that will come. And in the forehead, I'm not so sure it's a chip in the forehead. It may just be a number that you have to use, that you have to memorize. This front part of your head is the forehead is is where the memory center is. It's so, hmm, I don't know. But I would be very leery of ever letting anything be put in your in your hand or your forehead because that is the mark of the beast. And the beast, the abomination that makes desolate is that AI system, that AI system that will even be brought into the temple sanctuary and will be brought to life. And then when it's brought to life, it just so happens, it happens at the time where that beast comes out of the bottomless pit. That means there's going to be a, the biggest volcanic eruption ever from, from the, the, mo the deepest volcano, which is what southeast southwest of japan that there's a huge volcano there and so that demon when it comes out it's going to reside in the beast and the, and the antichrist their antichrist is going to bring it to life and that will be the beast from revelation that will be the abomination that makes desolate because it's going to make desolate everything it's going to control everything the good news is, is that our Lord is able. He's able, remember God, one of the churches of Revelation, we just talked about it in the living word. If you haven't been watching the living word, we went over the churches out of Revelation that might help you a little bit. There's a specific church and for overcoming it, God will bring you manna. Manna was a miraculous food supply. So if you were part of this church and you missed the rapture, God is gonna miraculously supply food during um, the time where the beast is ruling and, and the wrath is being poured out on God's uh, on the whole world. So the most important thing is our relationship with the Lord. How close are you to him? That was what you had to overcome in order to receive manna. And so go back and, and look at the living word for the churches <laughs> when we're going over them because it'll show you what you have to overcome in order to receive that miraculous pr provision and it's all about having the right focus uh, focusing on our lord on jesus as lord and learning his ways and doing them and when we do that we get that provision okay do we have any other questions about the abomination of desolation if you would like um scriptures to back all that up. I told you, if you ask a question here, I might not be able to give you the scriptures. As you can see, I could not quite find the scripture I wanted. I knew it was in the book of Revelation. I'll be happy to create that for next time. And we'll put that up on a little slideshow and you can see all the scriptures that I quoted concerning the abomination that makes desolate. Okay, uh, but are there any other questions here today? Hi, Lynn. I've got a question. Go right ahead. Um, is the, does the temple have to actually be structurally built or could it be um, just um, like they can carry out, they, they do some sort of, not makeshift, but um, yeah. Just, it has to actually be built and I can show you why. So a actually physical know where dwelling. Right. I actually know where that scripture is, so I can show you that it does actually have to be built. Um, shall we go there? That would be great. Okay. Um, if we go to Revelation chapter 11, this is how we know that it has to be um, built in order for the tribulation to begin. It's the fullness of this part right here. Um, and it's it begins with, this is Revelation 11. I refer to it as the chapter that describes what is going on in the world as the tribulation begins, as a seven, uh, 
seven years of Daniel's week begins. And there was given to me a reed like to a rod, and an angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and them that worship therein. So it begins with measuring a temple that has been built. How do we know that this will begin that seven year period? We have to keep reading. But the court which is out of the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given to the Gentiles and the holy city sh shall they tread underfoot for 42 months. 42 underfoot for 42 months. 42 months is exactly three and a half years. So in other words, this temple is being built and the Gentiles can go into the courtyard that the Gentiles are the those who are not part of the Jewish community. Uh, they can go and they'll be in the holy city. They'll be in Jerusalem. Can you imagine when the temple is being built? Christians are just going to flock to Israel, to Jerusalem. And they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, the temple's being built. I want to see it. Right. And that's for 42 months. That's three and a half years. That's half of Daniel's week. And so if we continue reading, we'll see the activities of the world during that first half. And I will give the power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,203 score days clothed in sackcloth. That means there are going to be two people that are going about prophesying for three and a half years. That's 1,260 days will be three and a half years. And then it describes the two witnesses, right? Um, and shows how they'll be protected and what they'll be able to do. And we can talk about the two witnesses another time if you'd like. Um, and then it says, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome come them and kill them. So that means that beast out of the bottomless pit will rise up during that time and shall kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom or Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. Our Lord was crucified in Jerusalem, so they're they're going to be they're they're going to be killed, and their bodies will be on display in Jerusalem. And it says, and they the and they of people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days. Well, remember when we're talking about Daniel's week, days equals years, so that means that these dead bodies will be on display for three and a half years. And I believe it's because the two witnesses will be telling people that they are going to rise again after three and a half years, just like Jesus's dead body. Remember, um, the Pharisees were scared of them stealing his body and pretending that he was back. Well, the Antichrist is not going to make that mistake. He's going to have their dead bodies for everyone to see so that they can't be stolen. And then people claiming they came back to life, they're going to be on display. And it says, and, and they shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts because the two prophets tormented them that dwell on earth. That means that these people, these two will be the most hated people on the earth. They'll be like Trump, even worse. Those who do not know God, who are not willing to hear words of correction, words about our father, truth, they're going to hate them. They're going to hate these two witnesses more than anyone else. They're even going to send gifts. And then it says, after three and a half days, again, we have three and a half days. That's three and a half years. The spirit of the life of God entered them and they stood on their feet. So that's where the resurrection of the two witnesses happen. And so we know that. A temple must be built. He's actually, in verse one, he's actually measuring a temple before the two witnesses began their testifying to begin the tribulation that, that three and a half years of testifying for three and a half years and prophesying to demonstrate that, yes, the time has come and showing the world what they need to do, why they're coming under correction. Does that answer your question, Julia? Elijah is asking a question and he says, will the two witnesses be born in Israel? Well, the Lord had me prepared for that question. He told me what to say. <laughs> there, is, there are scriptures. There, um, 
there every 1111 scripture within the New Testament that talks about um, the two witnesses. And it describes the two witnesses. I, if you'd like, next week will go through, or not next week, next time we do a meeting, next month, we'll go through those scriptures so you can see in the word of God um, what it says about the two witnesses. And it's actually a prophecy hidden within the New Testament. So Julia, um, you had another question. Can somebody unmute her? Um, just looking at um, the unrest currently between the Palestinians and the Jewish people, mm -hmm. you know, the Jews in Israel um, currently, in regard to the actual um, site with the Golden Dome of the Muslim Mosque being in, in the place where the um, original temple um, was on the Temple Mount, do how is it going to be built would it be built there or is it going to have to be built somewhere else you know there have been some recent developments concerning the temple where they think that the place where they thought the temple would be isn't actually where the temple will be so it may be in a place that we're not aware of how's that so it may be a new yeah. place in israel um that is revealed possibly by one of the two witnesses. Mm, okay. Because I was thinking, you know, when you look at that, the whole structure at the moment, um, I can't imagine <laughs> the yeah. Muslim people allowing their Golden Dome mosque to be, yeah, demolished. To and, have, yeah. And that's why we have to not be overly mm, set in what we believe we can look mm -hmm. at it and we can see certain things concerning the book of revelation to prepare us for this prophecy mm -hmm. but we have to be careful not to make the same mistake israel did when jesus came and that is to um be so focused on the details that we ex and how we expect them to happen that we miss mm -hmm. what what is actually going on because mm -hmm. we saw right there in daniel that it said it would be under construction for this amount of time and it was, mm. and yet they did. And even though Jesus was born during that time, they denied him. Yeah, they didn't see. Yeah, they, they couldn't mm. see. So what mm. we the only thing we can be looking for is, are, is there a temple and are is Israel making sacrifices to God? Because that will move forward that timeline and will begin mm. that 19 year period. Um, and that will be the beginning of the, the week of Daniel. People refer to that to the tribulation, and occasionally I do out of uh, habit. But the tribulation period and the great tribulation is actually a 19 year period, not a seven year period. So, for those of you who thought, oh, I don't have to worry mm -hmm. <laughs> about what's going to happen, well, guess what? You may want to worry because 19 years is a whole lot more than seven, right? Yeah, very. So that the you're you're saying like after the seven years, that's where it gets really it heats up for that last twelve, like the with the bowls of wrath and well remember we have the seals and the trumpets. Mm. The mm. seals are um releasing what is to come because it, it holds the, the scroll closed. So it's releasing mm. the prophecy, right? And yeah. And I know that the first seal, I, I actually had confirmation. The Lord was so good in a miraculous way. He confirmed that the first two seals have been broken. In 2022, mm -hmm. the Antichrist, the first seal, he is now moving in power. He's been given mm -hmm. power to ride forth. The second seal, war, was broken when Russia invaded the Ukraine. That was the beginning. And we see mm -hmm. war now upon Israel. And mm -hmm. there has to be war about before the uh, seven-year agreement can be signed. There's no need for a peace treaty if there's not war. So those mm. two seals have been broken, but it doesn't say they all have to be broken in a certain amount of time, just that they yeah. are. So we, Sorry, have, okay. so we have the seals that are, are broken and the last seal holds the seven trumpets. The seven trumpets, that's where the first one is small asteroids hitting the earth. The second trumpet is a asteroid hitting the ocean. Now it's not a planet killer, 
It does. It will not it's, it make it mankind ex extinct, but it will wreak havoc and allow the Antichrist to come into greater power. So mm -hmm. those two, those things will happen. And then all the rest of the trumpets really are just about the effects of the, uh, of an asteroid. If you look at them, they're what science mm -hmm. say would actually happen if an asteroid hits the ocean. So those are mm -hmm. trumpets, the feast of trumpets, right? Which is being fulfilled before the Lord returns. And I believe it's already begun is a 10 year period during that 10 year period of the feast of trumpets. It trumpets are blown announcing the enemy is coming. The enemy is mm -hmm. coming. That's what trumpets are for to tell you that, you know, the war is close. The enemy is close. Get ready. And so mm -hmm. the trumpets are just letting us know that we're going to be handed. The whole earth will be handed over to the Antichrist mm -hmm. and that God's wrath will be poured out. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I do believe the trumpets will all be blown. The final trumpet being the fulfillment of the Feast of Atonement. There's a final trumpet blown. The final trumpet um, and will means. also herald the rapture. For rapture, those yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Wow. Okay, thanks, Lynn. You're welcome. I hope that helps. No, it was good. It was good. They were just sort of little things that you just, you know, you're watching, you know, especially what's happening in Palestine with Palestine and you know with the the war in Israel at the moment I think that's pretty significant in regard to you know what's happening I mean that could be to do with the Antichrist moving in the background with it, you know that stirring up and yes. there's so many are siding pa with Palestine and it's um astounding it's the, in a sense it's the yeah. Antichrist mm. Christ and the God of and the in the seal of war the horsemen of mm. war because mm. by by the Antichrist working, you know, with in the background where no one can see it, the war, then that mm. leads that AI system of mm. uh, protection for Israel to be moved into that country. The need, oh gosh, yes, this AI protection mm. will help us, right, mm. um, for our military. So you see, that's just that's just fueling power to the Antichrist mm. and its goal. That's what we see happening now. Julie, the important thing to remember is this, that no matter how it is our relationship with the Lord, where, mm. how we are walking with him, that is the most important thing. We have to be careful not to focus on the mountain. You, mm. you know, we can all now, most of us can see that there is a mountain, which is the tribulation, which is the coming of our Lord in the distance. We can see it getting closer. We can see it start to be, you know, defined. But if we focus on that mountain, we're going to miss the next step along the path to our destiny. Destiny. It could cause us to step off a cliff and, and, and be distracted. We can't be distracted. We have to take yeah. this information, and that's why I'm only doing it once a month, and then yeah. go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I need a relationship with you. I need to be able to hear from you. I want to do your work while there is still time. I want to move to my destiny. That is the important thing. That is why the online Christian church.com, and all you have to do is type that in.com. You can go there and you can find free online classes to help remove the enemy um, so you can hear more from God. There's intercession mm. and let's chat that's available right away. If you feel that you're under an attack, if you feel that you can't continue learning, um, schedule a let's chat and let us help you get free. So you, our goal, the goal of that church is merely to, to connect you with the Lord, to get you mm. to be able to hear from him, to feel his peace, to be guided by him. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Lynn. You're welcome. Oh. Now we have another question. Oh. We have another question about um, who are the 144,000. Well, we are actually out of time. Our hour is up. So D, I will tomorrow begin um, by going over uh, the two witnesses, um, uh, not next week or next month, where the 1111 uh, scriptures will help define and give you a little more information about the two witnesses. And then we'll go over the question about the 144,000 because that in itself, 
we'll take looking at the scriptures to know when and where they're coming forth and what their purpose is and and what happens to them in the end. So we'll go ahead and look at that next next time. That is all I have for you today. I hope that you've learned something concerning the book of Revelation. Most of all, I hope you know and you see that it is only the Lord who can help us. It is only he who can see us through this time. And there's so much coming. There's so much coming in such a short time that our focus has to be on Jesus, on our relationship with him, on how much he loves us so we can hear from him about where to be, when to be, um, what to be focused on so we can be prepared for what is coming towards us in this lifetime. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for the wisdom that you have brought concerning the prophecy of John. Lord, I place all of these things into your hands today. I thank you, mighty God. I thank you that you are with us, that you have sent your son to us, that your spirit dwells within us. Holy Spirit, bring comfort and peace to every heart. Open up their eyes to see, their minds to comprehend the love of our God, of our Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for showing them the next step on the path to their destiny with you, the next thing you would have for them to do. I thank you, Lord, for showing them how to be set free, how to draw close to you. For time is indeed short. In your name, Lord, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. Until we see you again, shalom.